Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome back to the Funky Brain Podcast. My name is Dennis, and at least it's morning here. It's very early in the morning here. It is, well, I got up at four o'clock this morning, and the reason is, is because I'm talking with a, a great man, an international motivational keynote speaker, a poet, a businessman, and a leadership expert focusing on team building from India, Mr. Simarjeet Singh. How are you doing today, sir? Pleasure to be on your podcast here. And thank you so much for reaching out. And I'm looking forward to an exciting discussion today. Yeah, we're going to have a great time. I was looking out. The original reason I reached out to Mr. Singh is because I was looking for people with positive mindsets and speakers and like figures that talk about like law of attraction and positive mindset it takes to become successful and to have a happy, fulfilling life. And I came across Mr. Singh here. And um, one of the quotes I saw is, I believe this is from uh, Simarjeet Singh. I believe that success is finding our purpose and then designing a life that embraces it. And I love that quote that you had there. And Mm -hmm. you have a video where you talk about your struggle. And would you mind opening up about that and sharing that with our audience? And the reason I ask is because the Funky Brain podcast is focused on some recovery, people that have had struggles in their lives. And for those that are still struggling now, they see a couple of successful guys here, um, but they don't see what it took to get there. So maybe you can explain some of your struggles and how you got to be who you are and where you are today. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dennis. So I think before 2007, um, 2007 is what I will consider as the turning point where the entire direction of my life uh, took, took a major, um, I went through a deep period of deep personal transformation in 2007 onwards. It was an entirely different trajectory. Although things didn't change on the surface as much quickly, but the trajectory changed in a big way. So I would see my struggle with reinvention, with um, finding out what, what I really wanted to do in life, in the post-2007 period, it was more about finding meaning. It, we all are conditioned in a certain way to follow some goals and to achieve certain things in life. And what if you achieve all that at a fairly younger age, at 27, 28, you achieved that so everything that society, society's conditioned you to achieve. And then sets in the emptiness, and then comes the boredom. And then uh, you, do, you indulge in self-sabotage. You perhaps take on a lifestyle which is not very healthy. And the root cause of all of that, that is because you're disengaged. You're disengaged with life in general. You're perhaps disengaged with your choice of profession. Uh, there is no passion. You've got to look for external stimuli to you know, inject that passion that you need in your life. So post uh, pre-2007, pre the struggle was with coping with this uh, immense uh, sort of vacuum in my life. It's like, what's the next step? And as I figured out what the next step could be on the trajectory that I was on, I was in the hotel business. So I was a deputy hotel general manager and the next step would be a hotel general manager and then a regional general manager and so on and so forth. So what I discovered was as you climb up the ladder, you're moving away from people. You're setting, spending more time behind a screen. You're working on projections and Excel sheets and other sort of things. And the reason why I loved hospitality the most was the, the buzz of meeting people from different parts of the world, the travel, the stories and so many other exciting things that happened. And as I saw the next steps on that letter, Dennis, uh, it didn't excite me at all. I said, okay, regional journal manager, and I'll be sitting behind the screen all day monitoring whether we are achieving targets or not. And I thought that's when it sort of set in that I don't want to spend the next five years of my life the way I've just spent the last. So I believe when you begin asking the right questions, the right answers emerge. So 2007 was when I luckily also had enough time. I had the resources to explore, to go attend workshops, to spend time, to meditate. I think The Secret was launched at that point of time and so many other things happened. The universe sort of conspired to give me the space to explore. So I came up with this thing that I am going to change in a major way. So it's like I wake up and I want to take charge of my life. That moment, I changed some major habits uh, it was Tony Robbins seminar that I happened to attend that point of time. We did the fire walk. I took some major decisions. That was sort of the nudge that I needed in, in, you know, in terms of a lot of internal um, sort of battle was already happening. But when you go in the energy of 10,000 people at that huge place and you walk on fire and those sort of that little extra push, I, be, I went for NLP. I went through executive coaching. So many other tools were available. So I finally decided 
uh, this is going to be a major turning point. I want to not live but the next five years as I just spent the last. I moved back to India. I spent about 12 years uh, in different parts of the world, Australia, United States, uh, Dubai, and the UK. So 2007, without giving it much thought, I said, I'm going, I'm going back home. I want to be an entrepreneur. I don't want anybody else calling the shots in my life. And the struggle post 2007 was then to convert this newfound passion into a profession, to allow it to get to a level where I could support myself and my family to make a living out of this thing. And then one thing led to another. And uh, I think struggle would perhaps be a heavy word to describe that phase. I, I, as I reflect back on the last uh, 12 years, Dennis, it was an exciting ride where uh, we built from scratch. We started reaching out to clients and uh, no certainties. There's no paycheck coming at the end of the month. I don't know, someone wise once said the two of the biggest addictions on this planet are nicotine and a paycheck. So, <laughs> I, I, and when the paycheck goes away and you're out to fetch for yourselves and that was um, struggle, but I think Carl Jung said it beautifully. There is no coming to consciousness without pain. There is no coming to consciousness without pain. So if we look at a seed, it's buried in dirt. It has, it has, shell has to crack open. Its insides are coming out, but it's also germinating. So that's how I describe that phase uh, that I went through. I really love that. Yeah. And I, I couldn't agree more, but with the pain part of it, pain is the touchstone of spiritual growth. You know, in a world full of like turmoil, negativity, politics, coronavirus, and craziness <laughs> and war, how do you stay so positive? I think uh, it, it, uh, it's about priorities, Dennis. If you look at an individual who's made fitness his or her priority, you will find that they have arranged their whole life according to that priority. You will, you, they will find a way to get the best possible food, to get the organic stuff and the supplements and everything else they need in order to lead that healthy lifestyle. You will find that they will hire and find the best coaches available to do that. They have access to the equipment. I personally believe when we make something a priority, we human beings have the inherent ability to find a way to achieve that priority. So I prioritized post-2007 inner peace. I prioritized joy. I prioritized gratitude. I prioritized living a life in a way that I enjoy the journey. I think pre-2007, um, and I watched this movie, very interesting sort of documentary uh, from the late doc Dr. Wayne Dyer called The Shift. And he talks about the afternoon of your life, you know, and, and the afternoon of our life has nothing to do whatsoever with the age. You know, you could be 28 and be searching for the afternoon or the evening of your life, uh, which means to look at things differently. So post-2007, uh, pre-2007, I was driven by the conditioning of uh, social media or marketeers who want to sell us things or society or expectations of other people. And post that, it was all about inner peace. I want to live life on my terms. I want to slow down. I want to deliberately figure out what is the new direction I want to go on, even if it's not financially rewarding in the beginning. So I prioritized inner peace. And therefore, once you do that, you start getting the, you begin to reorient your life uh, in, in terms of that. So how do I stay positive if, if from a practical perspective in the middle of, and I think for any speaker, coach, anyone who wants to improve the world, uh, it's really important that you keep yourself full of positive energy because if, if you're not in joy, if you're not in positive emotions, you have nothing to contribute whatsoever anyway. You have nothing to give away. So as the Buddhists call it, uh, a cup overflowing of joy or a cup overflowing of possibilities, uh, that's the sort of the positive energy a coach or a trainer or a speaker or anyone who makes, wants to make a difference in the world. That's, that's the sort of positive energy they bring in. So I think one of the most important things for us is to protect of a positive energy. I do that by a few um, mental disciplines. Number one is to limit the intake of information, um, to control and safeguard my mindset, to not allow my brain to be overwhelmed with things that I cannot control directly. Um, Dr. Stephen Covey in his most beautiful book, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, uh, presented this model, the circle of influence and the circle of concern. And he said the Circle of concern is huge and it's dark and it's full of all the things that you cannot directly control. And he said there's a tiny little dot inside the circle of concern. That's your circle of influence. It's a, like a tiny beacon of hope, the light at the end of the tunnel, and which includes things which you can control uh, directly within you. It's been a tough time for everyone during the lockdown, including myself. 
you know, the, um, the sort of predictable pattern of how things would go in terms of speaking engagements and travel and other things. Everything has come to a standstill. Uh, we're still figuring out what's going to happen next. But I think the one thing that has remained in my control over the last 60 odd days or even before is when you wake up in the morning or the evening before is sort of the, um, the decision, like, what am I going to achieve tomorrow? What will I work on tomorrow? What is still within my control? What am I still thankful for? So it's about uh, that. That's one of the practical ways, I think, to limit energy and to choose what you want to dwell on, um, because what you dwell on expands. And if you're dwelling on what's going wrong in the world, um, of course, it's going to overwhelm you and you will develop a negative perspective. And the, even the slightest of dangers is going to um, look life like, like a catastrophe, like the world is coming to an end. That and then surrounding yourself with positive, happy people, even if they happen to be sitting in another part of the world like yourself, Dennis. So, <laughs> so to, to build your own tribe, um, whether digital or people around you and to uh, control your mental diet through books, through music, to exercise, I would sum up by saying it's about prioritizing. So if inner peace and positivity is your priority, you're going to find the tools and the wherewithal and the resources to make that happen. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. I love it. And um, once again, so uh, we're talking with Simarjeet Singh and he's joining us from India. So Simarjeet, if somebody wanted to reach out to you, if wanted to hire you for a speaking engagement or something, how would they uh, contact you? Um, Dennis, I'd say the best way is to reach out to our website, which is simarjeetsingh.com. That's spelled as S-I-M-E-R-J-E-E-T, simarjeetsingh.com. And that will lead them to uh, social media links, YouTube channel, and everything else uh, follows from there. Awesome. And um, I, yes, I love all the points you were talking about right before that is like, if you want to be successful, surround yourself with successful people. If you hang around with five you know, drunks on a bar stool in a bar somewhere, you're going to be the sixth drunk. If you want to hang out with five millionaires, you're going to be the next, the sixth millionaire. So it's like you have a choice. And a lot of people, True. they aren't really aware of that on a deep level that you have a choice. You know, a lot of us are victims of our environment, I believe. And mm -hmm. um, you stay stuck there, but you don't yeah. have to. That's a choice that you make. And you have, as a human being, you have a choice to get out. And some people are in a lot worse situations than others, but right, um, right. you do have a choice and there is a way out. Perhaps deep down, we're afraid of change. I think that's one of the things we need to, we'll be comfortable with that existing environment, even though it sucks, even though it's not up to the level that we would like it to be, rather than take some you know, conscious decisions and say, no, you know, this, this is, so actively saying no again, you know, is one of the important personal uh, lifestyle choices that I use to say no to stuff that does not resonate with you and to not regret about it. That's an important point too. At least me, I'm a people pleaser sometimes. I want everybody to be happy around me. So can you do this? Yeah, sure. And now I just overwhelmed myself right. and I, you know, took a lot off my plate. But one of the points I like to drive home when I'm talking to people in my coaching business is that we all deal with unfavorable situations, like hard situations. And can you share with us some of the failures that you've had to overcome to get to where you are and how did they create this successful man that we see here today? One of the major ones for me was um, the obsession to do an MBA from one of the world's top 10 business schools. And one of them happened to be in India, which is open, opened uh, in 2007 when I wanted to uh, relocate back to the country. So it was called the Indian School of Business and they had had like very high entry criteria. I pre prepared for a couple of months. I took the GMAT. I worked very hard on my application and everything, you know, all the right stuff that needed to go into it. Um, I, I gave my best shot. I gave it six months while I was working. And I was hoping that would be my safe passage back home. You know, so it's one of the best B schools in the world and in the country. It would land me a good job after I graduate. And <clears throat> so, and deep down, I realized that I was hiding. I was hiding and running away from what I really wanted to do. And what I wanted to do was what I'm doing now. But this MBA passage seemed sort of a safe choice. So uh, hoping that ISB would call me for an interview, I took that 10, 15 days off while the interviews were to happen just to be in India. And I would expect the phone to ring or I, would, uh, hope, I was hoping an email would come from them, but that did not happen. And that was one of the major, you know, sort of disappointments. And as I reflect back, I think uh, we did a video on that too. And as I reflect back, and I think uh, that was, it was one of the biggest blessings ever. So if I would have received that admission offer, life would have turned out to be entirely different um, from the independent, free thinking, 
person that I am now, I would be in a corporate setup with, you know, decisions and uh, other things decided by a hierarchy, by an organization. That, I think, one of the major setbacks. And then uh, uh, failures in terms of a lot of rejections, Dennis, more, more, uh, more than failure, a lot of rejections, um, and in, especially in the first three to four years of um, uh, pitching for, to clients for speaking engagements and trainings and other things. And it was very hard uh, because I'm not located in a metro city in India. So I'm not in the one of the four or five biggest cities. I'm not in the IT hub. I am in a tier two city in a smaller town because I came back to be with my family. And my family's always been here. So to physically travel to those locations and meet the decision makers was not possible. So, you know, you 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 start with zero clients, you have no credentials, you have, you don't have a business degree and and you're located in a different part of the country and here you are pitching to all the big uh, corporations in the country. So that was interesting, so a lot of rejections, a lot of embarrassing situations, but I think uh, those first 3 or 4 years uh, Jack Canfield, um, whose training program I also attended later in his book, The Success Principles, talks about this rule called SW, 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 which is some will, some won't, so what, someone's waiting. Uh, so <laughs> I love that. So, That's so great. Yeah. I haven't read that. It helped us to every time to not take rejection personally. So hence, I don't have like a long list of things that I'm holding on to today as a list of failures or because we used to like and not take it personally. It's like, okay, they don't need it right now. Or perhaps I am not at the level where I should be uh, in order to make this thing go through. So let me go back and work extra hard on myself. So we never took it personally and we would go with the flow and to understand some will, some won't, so what, someone's waiting and to move forward with that positive energy um, because sometimes that's the only choice that you have. And the only choice that you have is to be optimistic. I think we should rather do that rather than give up and say, hey, you know, it's the end of the story. Yeah, yeah. optimism is great. And I love, uh, you know, perspective is another thing. So is it failure or is it an opportunity? Another thing, like when you started with that last section right there, you were saying how, you know, there were disappointments and maybe rejections. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people look at that first initial rejection or disappointment as the end failure, the end result. Right. And that's not true. You know, that might have been a week into what you were trying to do. It might take mm -hmm. another year to get to where right. you want to be. Or, Absolutely. or you just said three or four years. And people mm -hmm. don't understand that part of it, that it takes time. Like when you see somebody who's successful or has overcome those challenges, it might have taken more than two days or even right, two right. years. In some mm -hmm. cases, it, it took two decades. Like the, mm -hmm. And you know Colonel Sanders from Kentucky mm -hmm. Fried Chicken? He didn't make mm -hmm. his first million until he was 68. 68 That's years right. old. So most That's people right. think, 68? I'm going to be dead mm -hmm. by then. Things take time. And a lot of people aren't into waiting. So great explanation there. I love that. And so when you're talking you. with your clients, what are some of the tools that you like to equip your clients with to empower them and help them to become successful? A lot of my inputs to my clients come from my own personal experience. Uh, because for me, my personal transformation happened first and then they desire to be a professional speaker. A lot of my inputs to my clients come from my own personal experience. And uh, some of the practical tools that I share, one is uh, morning decisions. I call this very interesting activity, morning decisions. It's, because it's before you start your day. It's before you pick up the phone. It's before you expose your mind to any sort of external stimulus. You talk to yourself and just visualize, even while lying in bed for a few minutes, and see yourself spending the rest of your day, right? And how would you like the day to be? Uh, what are you wearing? And uh, I, I go into as much detail as in to what perfume I'm wearing, uh, what shirt I'm wearing, and I, I see myself from a distance, you know, and I know the sort of problems that I'm perhaps I'm, I will encounter during the day, and I see myself from a distance, how am I dealing with those problems and issues, and so it's sort of um, uh, planning your day, but not on paper, you, you're rehearsing, visually rehearsing your day, and you make a few decisions, I use a few affirmations that nothing can disturb my peace of mind, and I repeat it three or four times, Nothing can disturb my peace of mind. Nothing can disturb my peace of mind. And that sort of stays. And then I start my day. So if somebody else is in a bad mood or there's bad energy or there's something else, it doesn't affect me because I've now built sort of like, just like if you're going out now with the COVID-19 infection around, you should be wearing a mask. So it's just like you have an emotional mask around your, in, around your mind and you're not allowing outside energy to come in. So that's one. Um, the second sort of tool that I share with my clients is, Take action despite uncertainty. And I feel uh, 
a lot of people are not able to do the things that they want to do is just that they want a lot of certainty before they take the first step. They, they want to see uh, 20, 30 steps ahead before they even take the first step. And I practice it and I preach it and I share it with my clients. Do what you can today with the resources that you have today and not worry about how the big picture is going to look like. Enjoy the journey, just like connecting the dots and you know, enjoy connecting this dot with the next. Put your best energy into it and allow the best, the big picture to emerge as and when it has to. But to take action, for God's sake, every day, take action. Do that little bit that you can today. The third uh, sort of uh, practical tool that I use is, um, it's again coming from Jack Canfield's success principles. Um, and I learned in 2016, I was practicing it subconsciously, but Jack just gave it a nice title. It's called Ask, Ask, Ask. So do not be afraid to ask. So, and a lot of you get good opportunities for, for partnerships, for investments, for so many other things. A lot of people don't get help because they don't ask. I don't think a lot of people know this, but there's a video out on YouTube where Steve Jobs asked the then president of Hewlett Packard when he was 14 or uh, he had a summer vacation and Steve picked up the phone and called the, uh, the company uh, landline number and the president of Hewlett Packard picked up and he asked if he could do an internship there and he knew this, this, this. And they said yes. And uh, I would request the viewers to look up that video because that's a powerful testimony to the wonderful things that can happen if you just ask, you know. And, and daily practice of gratitude is another one, Dennis, that I practice and I share it with my clients as obvious as it seems, um, as much as we've heard about the power of gratitude but we still take a lot of things for granted. I live in India and with the sort of the, the sort of the news that sometimes comes in about the tough situation that people are around, uh, that gratitude gives you a sense of perspective that how blessed you are uh, to have access to the resources that you have. And also it gives you a sense of responsibility too. Now that I have this, which other people don't have, what am I, what am I going to do with it? Am I just going to um, take it for granted and not use these resources? If I, have, um, if I know better than others, if I have access to better resources, will I use it to serve or will I just keep it to myself? So that powerful feeling of gratitude every day, wherein you unconditionally say thank you, thank you, thank you to the universe for everything that's coming in. And to use it to serve, I think, um, I think Dennis, what, one of the things that I deeply believe in if we go after money directly, it's a very difficult chase. The, the, more, uh, the more faster we run, uh, the faster money, success, fame, or all these sort of exterior things that most people run after, the more we run after them directly, the further they go. Away. It's like catching your own shadow, right? But if you come from a mindset of service, if you come from a mindset of how can I serve, uh, the immensity of so much of the, all the abundance that pours into your life is huge. You know, it, it will be more than anything that we ever expected. So gratitude unlocks so much power of the universe. And um, I think uh, it, along with that on a daily basis is clarity of direction is one of the other important tools that I share with my clients and I use it in my own life. Um, I maintain a little diary, a little notebook, a little journal, which I write, what do I really want? What do I really want? And I do this on a frequent basis in order to be very specific about what do I want from my life? And sometimes, because we, if we are general about what we want, what we are asking, what we are after, um, we get sort of a general result, you know, like a mixed up result. But the more specific we are about every area of improvement in our life, be it your fitness or financial health or your relationships, uh, to note down sort of this is the ideal how I'd like my life to shape out. Because now you have a subconscious uh, image of how you want things to take shape. So these are some of the tools that I use myself and I share with my clients. Yeah, I love that. And instead of focusing on the end game, on the money, on the fame, on the mm -hmm. fortune, whatever it is, mm -hmm. focus on doing the right thing and doing it well and helping people along the way. When you do that, Absolutely. that stuff chases after you. Like that, that stuff it just does. falls into place. So focus on fitness, that body, mind, and spirit. These are ancient principles. There's nothing new we're discussing here. This is old true, stuff, true, man. True. Thousands of years old. Right. We, we all suffer mm -hmm. from the human condition. 
we all want to be somebody. We all want to make some money. We all want to have a, a, a nice partner to share our time with. And um, mm -hmm. it's not new. It's been going on for mm -hmm. thousands of years and people right. are not focused on the right thing. So everything you said is awesome. I love it. I'm so grateful that we've been able to uh, spend this time together. But the last thing I want to ask you is like, how do you want to be mm -hmm. remembered when somebody hears the name Simmerjeet Singh in 20 years or even a hundred years from now, what do you want them to remember you by? A happy guy who lived his life well, who, um, who, was, uh, who served and contributed and made a difference. And um, I, I want to do big things. I, I want to achieve big things in my life, Dennis. I'll be honest with that. But as and when that happens, you know, before that, I think the, my duty is to do whatever comes my way with my best, best of my ability, with love and devotion and care, and um, to enjoy this beautiful journey that we're all on. So th there is no specific hardcore goal as such that, you know, X amount of money or this position or that. And um, yeah, I want to be of service to my fellow human beings. And I think as the poet uh, Emily Bronte said it well, I said, even if one life breathed easier because I lived, I shall not have lived in vain. I shall have not lived in vain. So I, 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 that's, that's sort of the goal to be able to add as much value as, as I can to my fellow human beings and to enjoy um, the abundance that life has to offer in every aspect. Um, and to leave a mark on the world or, or on people's hearts or uh, however that would be. Yeah. Well, I think you're doing that and it emanates in what you're saying and how you present yourself. So thank, thank you, you for spending this time with me this morning or your evening. I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. I know your time mm -hmm. is valuable and I appreciate you sharing all that stuff with us, all of your wisdom and experience. So again, uh, please reach out to Simmerji. Um, there, there is uh, our YouTube channel, uh, which we publish content every, uh, frequently on different topics. And that's um, uh, youtube.com forward slash Simmerji Sings. And my website also goes by my name. Um, so that would lead you to all the different social media contacts. Dennis, I really appreciate you reaching out and having me on your podcast. It's been a wonderful discussion as I anticipated it would be having seen your energy in the previous videos. Thank you so much. Keep up doing the good work. This is an act of leadership what you're doing in a tough time where people are losing hope they're losing jobs and they're, 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 there's a lot of pessimism around and, and you what you're doing is an act of initiative is an act of leadership by spreading joy hope and I wish you all the very best thank you once again thank you Sarah G. I feel the same way and thanks everybody for listening to the funky brain podcast today and have a great day today talk to you soon Hey, Dennis here. Have you ever looked in the mirror and thought, I need to quit? Or maybe you've tried dozens or even hundreds of times on your own, but you can't do it. If you are sick and tired of being sick and tired, call me now for a free 20-minute consultation. We'll just talk for a little bit and we'll see if you don't feel better. And while we're all dealing with the COVID pandemic, I'm offering two free full 40-minute coaching sessions. We'll get you set up with the tools you need to become successful in recovery and sobriety. I know from experience, having been sober since April 8th of 2003, that it is not easy, but you don't have to do it by yourself. I'm here to help. We'll do it together. If I can get clean and sober, anybody can. So call me right now, not tomorrow when you're sick and hungover again, right now. I'm here to help. Have a great day.